get my title first. Thank God, because I feel like that the scriptures will mean more to you. But the God of a, another chance. The God of another chance. Thank God. This is what Jesus said to the, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. In John chapter 8, verse number 10. And when he had lifted up himself, and he saw that none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? And she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. This is what he said to the thief on the cross in Luke chapter 23 and verse number 42 and 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And then this is what you need to say to the devil. Praise God. Micah chapter 2 and verse 7 and 8. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Thank God. Let's ask God to bless his word. Lord, we pray for a fresh anointing. Pray for something good to happen today. Thank you for what's already happened, Lord. And we give you the honor for it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank God. God bless you. you may be seated. Praise God. We feel refreshed already in the Holy Ghost. Thank God. And I pray that his word will <clears throat> add to what <clears throat> the Spirit's already done here today. You know, it'd be great if you could do some things over in life. Get a second chance at getting a, a better education and maybe some other decisions that you made about choices that you made in life like, um, you know, um, getting God in your life sooner, um, getting a different type of job, the way that we have spent our money and didn't realize that someday we might get old. Praise God, you know, I didn't ever think I would get old. I thought the rapture would take place. But, you know, here I am. I'm really not old yet, but someday, you know, it looks like I'm going to get old. So it's just kind of part of it. But um, to, so life is that way, though. It's not possible that we can go back and undo some things. We are only going to pass this way once. There are no retakes in life, and so um, there are no really second chances at life again. They only get to pass this way once, thank God. But when it comes to God, I do have some good news for you. He is the God of another chance. Thank God, as long as you... As long as you live, as long as you have breath, thank God, there is. God is always ready to give us another chance. In life, we can only, uh, we don't get to call, get a second chance. And then, uh, you know, uh, other situations, thank God, uh, they have words for uh, another chance. You know, in God, they call it a mulligan, thank God. But in the Bible, it's called forgiveness, praise God. And so I'm thankful because this is a fact of life. Everyone is going to fail, and so from time to time, we, we need a, a second chance. We need another call. We need another time for God to forgive us. And so when you look at that, you have to understand that, um, you know, anything in life, if you are going to succeed at it, you may fail before you succeed, but the truth of the matter is, is that failure... Um, often comes before success, but many times the problem is, is that people just don't realize that they need to just keep trying. Um, many of us have read the books of Max Locato. He's a Christian writer, but he said that he had to go to 15 different publishers before he ever got one of his books printed, and now there's millions of his books printed. And But uh, the reason it is is because he didn't give up when one publisher said no and 10 publishers said no and 15 said no. Finally, he just kept reaching, and God did... Um, you know, open a door, and his books are now very famous. And if you live for God and get very long, you're going to slip up. You're going to miss the mark. You're going to uh, come up short. And so it's so thankful to know that God does have a way of letting us come back into his presence because you have to learn to, to get up one more time than you get knocked down. The secret to living for God is never give up. You know, just keep on holding on until help comes. And when you fall, thank God, it is that you find out that God is really uh, merciful. And also you find out that you've got what it takes to live for God because you learn how to, to get up again. And so the Bible says, rejoice not against me, O my enemy, not if I fall, but when I fall. And so God wanted us to know. So when it happens, thank God, you have to learn to, to get up and try again. The, the quicker you learn to um, get up 
uh, from your failures, the quicker you're going to be able to learn that uh, that's not the end. That's just a, a lesson of how not to do things. And so the better uh, you, um, your walk with God will be as you learn from your mistakes and you learn how to get up. And so the quicker you get up, thank God, the easier it is to, to let um, it be a lesson learned and a lesson that we are going to do better with. And so don't be guilty of, of having a pity party every time things don't work out the way you want them because he is the God of the second chance. He will restore, he will renew, he will help. Thank God. But it's been said that, you know, life is like an elevator. Uh, there is two directions you can go, you know, and you have to decide whether you're going to go up or whether you're going to go down. So you have to learn how to push the button to go up because that is what his will is, is that life is meant for us to overcome and not to be overcome by life. And so uh, you will uh, get, you know, some breaks in life that you deserve and you'll get some breaks in life that you don't deserve. And you'll get some bad breaks in life that you deserve and you'll get some bad breaks in life you didn't deserve. But somewhere you just have to understand that's life. Thank God. And in life sometimes we all become uh, discouraged at uh, some moment. Thank God. And uh, it's not that... That that's negative, that's just at times life gets heavy. But it's great to know that there's a place where that we can go into his presence and he can give us wings to mount up with that we can overcome those situations that have brought us low. The key is to just understand that, that God is for us. And if God be for us, it really doesn't matter what's against you. Let's keep believing that, God, you're going to arrive right on time. You know, sometimes we think God is late, but the truth is he's always right on time. Thank God. And so it is... Um, a failure that he, he, you know, that he cannot forgive. Thank God there's not a situation that he can't come to and, and help us with. Thank God. If it's sorrow, thank God he will be your comforter. Thank God like no other can. If it's sickness, he can be your healer. Thank God if it's an adversity or an affliction, thank God he can give you the grace to go through your affliction. And so, uh, again, you know, we just need to learn to say with Michael, therefore will I look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will heal me. Rejoice not against me, O oh, my enemy. Thank God for when I fall, I shall arise. And I, when I sit in darkness, the Lord is going to be a light unto me. And the reason that there is an, an in um, an increase in things like suicide and alcoholism and, and drug abuse and things and people having nervous breakdowns is because people have been taught that you have to succeed in life. And they don't prepare people for failure. But the truth is, is that we should be learning people how to, to fail so that they won't let that overcome them and realize that um, the, every great success had a failure behind it. You know, great things that have happened, all the, the great inventions um, and things, just like the Wright brothers. If they had quit the first time their plane didn't fly, we may not even know that you could fly an airplane. But because they persisted and kept on, they ultimately had a successful plane that would fly. Thank God. And when you're down, thank God, you need to remember you don't have to stay down. Thank God. Life is like an elevator. And somewhere you just have to learn how to push that up button. Thank God. You don't have to stay in the basement. This is a place in God where that he can lift you out of your despair. You can mount up with wings as an eagle can run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Thank God you can actually get a boost from your, your knocks in life. Thank God. Sometimes um, the best thing that can happen to you is just to learn how not to do something and try to learn from your, your knockdowns so that you learn how to stay up the next time that you encounter that situation. It's all in how that you choose to, to handle it. God always is willing to give us a second chance. God is always ready to forgive and to restore. That is his great desire and that is his great joy. Matter of fact, heaven rejoices over uh, one sinner repenting. And so obviously all of the times that we have to bring ourselves back to an altar and repent, thank God, God is rejoicing and heaven is rejoicing. Thank God. And the tragedy is that you know, two men can have the same kind of circumstances in life and they can uh, deal with it totally different. One can go stronger and better. The other can grow bitter and weaker. Thank God it's all in how that you choose to take it uh, when life begins to happen to you. You can't always control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to what happens to you. 
There's a way to, to fall forward. There's a way to uh, go be going forward. It doesn't matter even uh, if it is uh, stumbling my way along. Thank God. If you understand that failure is not failing, thank God, it's only a temporary inconvenience. Failure is merely a lesson of how not to do things, and you need to just understand the power of how and God, God can take you to places you never dreamed you could go to. There is an immutable law in human behavior, though, that the sooner or later we will get just what we expect. And God, so I'm going to start expecting good things. I'm going to start expecting blessings. I'm not going to be expecting bad things. I'm going to be saying, I can do this. I can make it. Thank God, I will try again. I, I'm not going to quit. Thank God, quitters, thank God, never win. But winners, thank God, never quit. And so somewhere you have to get that kind of determination about living for God. So expect the best. Thank God, expect life to turn around for you. And remember, God's got a second chance for every one of us. And so... Um, Pay little attention to the, the odd makers. Uh, one of uh, the best things that God has ever done is done things against the odds. Thank God. So don't plan your day according to the weatherman. Praise God. If you do, you're going to miss some wonderful moments. Praise God. Because uh, just as sure as he predicts rain, it'll be sunshine. As sure as he predicts sunshine, it'll be rain. So thank God. Me and Galvin learned a long time ago, we used to play golf early in the mornings. We hadn't been able to do that in a long time. But um, we didn't worry about the weather. We just showed up. Praise God. And you just, because the brother man might say it's going to be this way. You get there and it didn't even happen. Later on the day, you know, you say, man, we're sure glad we came because, you know, you would have missed that opportunity. Thank God. Only, uh, you know, remember that so many times um, people that have succeeded in life, one report said over 700 of the successful men that were interviewed said that they had a, an average of seven times that they failed before they finally succeeded. Thank God, the key is to just don't give up. Thank God, that is the most uh, notable champions in uh, all things, you know, in sports or whatever. If you read their story and you hear their story, they went through many discouraging things before they ever became a champion, before they ever got as good as they were. There was even some that the coaches told that you'll never be able to play this game, that ultimately they became one of the greatest players. And so it was because they were determined, thank God, and they finally won because they refused to become discouraged over their defeats and their failures. And so the price of success is just persistence, thank God, and persevering, thank God. And so we need to realize that God is on our side, and no matter how bad we fall, God is always there to give us another chance. He will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's going to always be there for you. Thank God. Our, our greatest glory lies not in never failing, but in rising one more time than we fall. And Proverbs 24 and 16 said it like this, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall not shall fall unto mischief. But a oh, just man, thank God, rises seven times. Thank God. God is in the the fixing business, God is in the helping business, God is in the second chance business, thank God, if God could give Peter that denied him three times another chance, thank God, there's hope for you, praise God, if God could reach down in the belly of a whale and give rebellious and uh, stubborn Jonah a second chance, thank God, there's hope for you, thank God, I'm telling you that God can do for you again and again, he doesn't ever get weary in forgiving, he doesn't ever get weary in helping us up again, so don't give up on yourself because God hasn't given up on you. So why should you give up? Thank God. Understand that mercy is renewed every day. Thank God. And failure, thank God, again is not failure. Thank God. You can try again. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You've got to be able to, to look at the devil and just say uh, to him, thank God, rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy, because I'm going to get up. Praise God. I'm not staying down. I'm getting up, and I'm going to keep getting up until I cross the finish line. And let's, uh, your failures just uh, cause you to be uh, driven closer to God as uh, you seek after him to help you to overcome. Matter of fact, Mother Teresa said, Failure is the kiss of Jesus because it drives you to closer to him. I really believe that I have um, preached this message today because there's someone here today that maybe you've been knocked down and the devil's trying to convince you that there is no way to get up that you're a lost cause, but I'm telling you, there are no lost causes with God. God is always able to go where you need him to go. And he tells you, you know, the devil tells you it's no use to, 
to get up again. But he's a liar and the truth's not in him. So just remember who's talking to you. Hey, God, and you don't have to believe a lie when you can have the truth and know that the truth will set me free. And so the truth is um, that life, thank God, is going to be given by God, that God is going to make the way. He's the ultimate giver of another chance. And the story that I read from uh, my text today, it was uh, concerning Jesus when they brought the woman that was caught into uh, adultery. And, of course, the law said that she needed to be stoned to death, and they were just using Jesus, uh, this situation, to try to catch Jesus in uh, breaking the law and saying they should do something that was contrary to the law. But Jesus, you know, just uh, used that moment and he was able to um, bring them all to their knees by just saying, well, okay, uh, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And so Jesus got rid of her accusers. And then he said to her, thank God, um, that was brought there to be stoned. Thank God. He said, where are thine accusers? And she said, there are none. And he said, neither do I condemn thee. And then he said, you can go and you can sin no more. He actually didn't just uh, get her out of her situation, but he gave her a whole new lease on life. He forgave her sins and he said, go and you don't have to sin anymore. And then Jesus, you know, said, uh, you know, you are free to go in a different direction today. And so that's what God does when he comes into our presence. He brings uh, help to us. He brings hope to us. He brings guidance to us. And I believe that he's here today to do just that for every one of us that's here. While we're standing today, you know, the thief on the cross was fixing to die. He was fixing to go to a devil's hell. Praise God. But he cried out to Jesus. And Jesus forgave him. And he said, today, thank God, you're going to be in heaven man that was fixing to step into eternity and go to hell, Jesus looked at him and said, thank God, because you've cried out, thank God, you're forgiven, praise God, and today you're going to be in heaven with me. Thank God. So if you uh, are breathing here today, thank God, if you'll cry out to the Lord, he will forgive, he will make a way. Don't believe the devil's lie that you're a hopeless case because there are no hopeless cases with God. God can reach to the uttermost part to reach to the heart and to save that soul. And so today you can be forgiven. Today you can be saved. Thank God, the most important decision you will make, thank God, is just to get up and to try again. And so today he wants you to just tell the devil, rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy. Because I'm going to get up, thank God, and I'm going to live for God with all of my heart. Because I'm going to repent, thank God, I'm going to have my sins forgiven. I'm going to be born again. And so today, thank God, can be the beginning of a living and overcoming life. And that's what it's all about. It's to be an overcomer. When it says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Praise God. I want to hear him say, well done. And the way you do that is to just let mercy touch you one more time. Praise God. If there's a need here today, you need the Holy Ghost. If you just need a fresh touch, thank God. If you had a, a, a bad week and some things have gone wrong, I want you to know mercy's here today. Grace is here today. Why don't you come to the altar and just let a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost come. I didn't give you a refreshing today. Praise God. Let's just.